Oh, jeez. Well, that... Are you, are you sure that village was only a few miles back? It feels like I've been walking for weeks. Maybe you have been. Time isn't so set anymore. Sorry about that. Well, if that's the case, then... Well, I, I don't remember eating or using the bathroom. I made a slight adjustment, so I don't think we need to eat anymore. Or poop. Or maybe we would poop if we did eat, but poop grosses me out, so I think that's why we don't have to eat. God, I don't know what's going to be harder to get used to. Time not being fixed, not having to poop, or having a damn alien ghost stuck in my head. Please don't call me a ghost. And as soon as we get me out of your head, then everything will fix itself. You'll be back to tweeting on the toilet in no time. Or oh, all time. Still trying to get my head around the concept of time. My point is, it should all be fixed after I return to my dimension. Well, just keep talking, and I'll let you know when you're trippy. Time and space is fraying, and, and reforming talk starts making sense. Uh... Speaking of not making sense, this place is a lot more, um, adorable than I thought it would be. The bleed from my dimension is stronger the closer we get to the rift. Echoes of our people, our reality, are beginning to etch themselves into the reality here. And your dimension is an adorable cartoon? Sometimes. Isn't yours? I think this tower might just be what we need. Yep. Although the path seems to be blocked. And since you simply refuse to let me convert you into a fluid, I guess we're going to have to find a way around it. I wonder if that door in the hallway behind us decided to unlock. Hello! Huh, no echo at all. And there must be nothing for miles. I hope you're not scared of heights. You're just worried about having to find a new body if I fall. Besides, can't you make my legs into super shock absorbers or something? I suppose I could. Okay, wait, did you do that already? Maybe. Gosh, even the graveyard here is cute. I sure hope nothing spooky happens. Why would something spooky happen? You know, uh, graveyards, dead bodies, uh, ghosts and ghouls. Ghosts aren't real, Leo. You're literally a ghost, P, and I'm talking to you right now. I have said this a hundred times now. I am not a ghost. I'm the residual consciousness of a trans-dimensional entity compressed into a three-dimensional space. Is it just a momentary splitting of my physical form? That kind of sounds like what a ghost is. Do you want me to make your mouth disappear? Oh my god, that's exactly the kind of spooky thing a ghost would do. Hey, uh, Leo, uh, you should grab that incendiary device. 
The candle? What for? Well, I wasn't expecting this place to be as jumbled up as it is. The rift exposures mixed things up at a foundational level. Which is how we get a medieval castle right where the Dave and Busters used to be. Exactly. But the shift tends to be in holes. Like cutting the picture out of a magazine and gluing it into a, another magazine. But this place has been altered more fundamentally, like it was woven together, not smashed. Okay, but isn't that a good thing? I mean, I've seen enough roads leading right into hillsides and, and hallways to nowhere. It could be. The thing is, I can't really tell how much of this place is still your world and how much of it is mine. If time itself is unstuck here, then we can use that flame as a focal point to enter the memory streams of previous inhabitants. That might reorder the balance of reality here. Open new paths, change the architecture, basically bring reality here more in line with actual reality. Okay, so how would I go about doing that? Just place the candle in the last place the previous inhabitants transitioned through in physical space. Oh, uh, one of those tombstones should do. So you want me to use the candle to talk to ghosts? No, ghosts aren't real. You're just bringing the memory and consciousness of the past people who are no longer here into the present time stream. Can you explain to me how that's different from summoning ghosts? I'm not calling them ghosts. Right, the connection's established. Just step into that light, begin synchronizing your timeline with theirs. This should allow you to harmonize your consciousness and experience with their thoughts. So, you want me to let the ghost possess me? For the last time, it is not a ghost. And it's not possessing you. It's just temporarily controlling your thoughts. Couldn't we just use some kind of communication medium like maybe a, a wooden board with the alphabet on it that the that the ghost I mean previous resident could speak to us through I know what you're implying and yes that would work but we didn't bring such a board now did we
That was fun. Not too jarring? Honestly, after recontextualizing my test subjects in the Mind Palace and then giving myself the cognitive kick in that messed up house, I'm kind of used to it. Popping in and out of someone else's mind is kind of old hat for me now. Whew, that's good. I was worried the shock of experiencing another's life might be a bit too much for you. Nah, I'm good. Uh, just curious though. Why are you worried? Well, there's a chance that if the experience was too traumatic, your present consciousness would be overwritten by the one you're connecting with. Which would be bad for me, because I currently live here. So you're saying that the ghost could possess me forever? Sure. That's exactly what I'm saying. Well done. Mm-hmm. 